Now we're on page 48 of your workbook. This is part five, and this is a review of um, each of the rhythms, the most common uh, normal and uh, irregular rhythms that you're going to see. And um, we actually start here on page 49. And this is a normal sinus rhythm, and this is a good place to start uh, because a normal sinus rhythm would give us a good uh, basis of comparison. So heart rate in a normal sinus rhythm, or NSR, is between 60 and 99. I say 99 because any heart rate that's 100 or greater is considered a tachycardia. Any heart rate less than 60 is considered a bradycardia. So that's the normal heart rate range there. And we can uh, map this out to determine uh, the heart rate by finding a QRS complex that falls close to a dark line. If we count down, the heart rate is 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 63, 66, uh, roughly uh, 66 beats per minute. That's an approximation there. The P waves are present in uprights, in, upright rather, in leads one, two, and three. And what's important here is that the P waves occur regularly, just as the, the R waves do, and that the P wave morphology is consistent. So uh, it may not appear exactly that way here, but the, the P wave there is exactly the same as this one, exactly the same as this one, and so on and so forth. Um, that's important uh, because the P wave morphology can sometimes be different. Sometimes you'll see P waves that are uh, notched like this. Sometimes you'll see P waves that are bi biphasic like this. But as long as the P wave morphology is consistent throughout and the rhythm is regular, we're dealing with a sinus rhythm. The peer interval in this case is uh, point. Uh, zero, sorry, 0 0.2 second or less, so uh, no more than five small squares. And if we look at, um, for example, what I try to do is find a P wave that starts on a dark line, like this one here. We'll just enlarge it a little bit. And so you can see that um, uh, the P wave starts there, and the end of the peer interval, or where the QRS begins, is right about there at about four millimeters or 0.16 second. Uh, but the main thing is the peer interval could be as long as 0 0.20 seconds, so that's as wide or as long as five small squares. So it's within uh, that range. Uh, now we have um, a QRS, which is usually narrow in a sinus rhythm. Uh, so that's less than 0 0.12 second or less than three small squares. And I say usually because you can have a patient with a sinus rhythm with an underlying bundle branch block, uh, which would give them a Y QRS. But as long as there's a P wave followed by a Y QRS and it's consistent throughout, we know we're still dealing with a sinus rhythm, but in, in the latter case, a sinus rhythm with aberrancy. The ratio in a sinus rhythm is one P wave to one QRS. And finally, the rhythm is regular in a sinus rhythm.